Welcome back to Plug and Play V. I'm Steve, and you join me at a pilot center in Ohio. Not just any pilot, though. It is the site of the first federally funded National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure DC fast charging site. So lots of coverage of this site in uh, early December when it opened. Had an official ribbon cutting with the governor and a bunch of other luminaries from the various companies involved. GM, Pilot, and the Ohio Department of Transportation. But uh, we're over here on a holiday break a little bit after all the fanfare and uh, we'll see how it goes with a quick charge addition on this first federally funded DC fast charging site in the United States. Let's go. So quick note, I haven't actually found it in the Hyundai navigation system yet, might be too new and this is one of the problems with the older OEM software but for the sake of warming the battery pack we've got ourselves navigated to a different station 13 miles away we'll just let that go for as long as we can so that we know the pack is warm and uh, then we'll get plugged in and see what kind of maximum charge speeds we get it's not raining anymore but you can see it was raining earlier see why that canopy would be nice now lights have gone off since we've uh, messed around a little bit but Nothing on the same screen, same one we saw before. Let's just plug it in, see what happens. Uh huh. Didn't like it. All right. Possibly not a solid connection there before. Okay. So no payment interaction from me, but we'll see that 59 cents per kilowatt hour kick in really quickly here. I kind of want to test peak here more than anything else, not to uh, stay plugged in for too long, but definitely see that going to work right away. And that will be on the car more than anything else. So it'll want to sit at that for a little bit and then crank itself up to 230, 240 if it's ready to go. But let's jump in the car and have a look because this is going to get pretty expensive pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, so you can already see that. I mean, it's not going to be the 10 to 80% test in 18 minutes because we didn't go that low, but to start at 26%, you can see we'd only be here 15 minutes to get to 80%. It will sit there for a little bit, crank it up to 230 maybe. Definitely with that 14 minutes to 80%, you know it's going to hit close to its peak, even if it's not 240, it'll be uh, in that 220 to 230 bracket. This is right in the little, one of the first things that you'll see. There's a sheets as well, a couple of other facilities, but essentially you're the first thing that uh, you hit off this exit 79, just west of Columbus, about uh, 20 miles to the west. You can see it's this kind of cross in the middle of the state of Ohio between Indiana and Pennsylvania. If you're heading to Pittsburgh or Indianapolis, this would be a good midpoint perhaps, and very convenient right off the interstate there and see it going up we're going to crank there a little bit i might have to stop this really early because it's going to rack up the funds pretty quick but already after just a few minutes cranking up to 230 you can see dedicated emergency stop buttons not right on the dispenser where you could confuse them your accessibility various pollards See, one of the problems here, backing in, it was not so much a problem walking across as the passenger, but if you're parking, if you've got to reverse in, these are pretty big stalls, so you might not need to, but uh, you're definitely going to be across the drive through lane, which is going to be busy, so it's one thing that could have been improved, maybe. You'll be able to see both of these at the same time. You could start another session quite easily, but it says clearly this one's in use. And you can already see how high up we are there. Already past the 10 bucks mark. So just the nature of the beast when you're on this, but you are getting that full capability pretty much. That will ramp a little bit more as we get into 50s and you'll get that full 80% charge in 15 minutes or so. 
and you'll just pay the cost for it because it is a little bit pricey. Oh, no session details, there you go. Okay, so there's your amperage, voltage, those two equaling this one, duration. Okay, I'm gonna stop it now, so we're on a clear 25% added. Okay, so 25% of the pack in a little over six minutes, 21.7 kilowatt hours and $12.85 for the privilege. Let's see if it's telling me there's gonna be any idle fees or anything. It does remind you to return it, move your vehicle. Don't see any idle fees. Maybe that's something they'll introduce later. That's that. Simple, quick, and a little bit pricey. It'd be rude not to use the squeegee facilities, right? We do have quite a mucky reel. And of course, I forgot to do the Auto wipers, so I'll be fighting them. There we go. <laughs> Another quick look at these. Two sides up to 350 kilowatts. That's if one is plugged in, but this simultaneous charging will bring you down to, uh, it's supposed to be 175 each, but because they probably have this limitation, they're 500 amp handles, but uh, there are limitations on some of these where you'll only get 200 amps when the second one is plugged in. So we'll see what that says on the hardware labels. Clearly noted charger one. So there's your 200 amp limitation, 500 plus 200. So it does say 175 kilowatts max. Not what I've seen from these units in New York state when we've done it with the XC40 recharge and a, uh, the Ionic 5. But lots of stuff there to look at and consider. Tap to start, you've got your payment reader as is required on these, as well as the app start. And uh, I don't actually know if you can do this in the Flying J app yet. You should probably take a look. See the pricing there is uh, a little bit up there. I do have this rewards app, maybe I'll try that. But you don't get anything at the moment. It's a single, it's not a low price as it suggests, but it is a single price. Best coffee on the interstate. It's possibly debatable as well. Best coffee on the interstate. Yeah, but not bad. So a few simple steps. Tells you paying for this with an EVgo and without an EVgo account. So that's just using the reader. If you're having problems, there's a dedicated number, which is for Pilot Flying J. Start a charge session, pick the connector. Does mention Tesla here, or Telsa. <laughs> but that's interesting, because uh, that's future-proofing, not available yet, but eventually they'll get these with uh, possibly one of these and one J3400 plug. But for now, we've got two CCS. That was the requirement and never eat funding before all the shenanigans with the connectors switching. Stopping a charging session. Stop from the DC fast charger. 
automatically stop after a 30 to 60 minute session has been reached or your car is at full battery. Interesting, they mention level two chargers as well. Haven't seen any of them around yet. And troubleshooting, again, just stopping the connector. Talks about your plug locking to your car because that can happen. And sometimes you need to unlock from the key fob or the car itself. Sometimes the weight of the cable. So they've given you a lot of information here. They've kind of, you know, not that you want to have that problem, but if the latching is an issue, then uh, they're giving you some troubleshooting. That's just four options there. So, fair amount of stuff here. A bit noisy with the trucks going around in the background, but you're clearly branded GM Energy Pilot. They'll be flying J in some of these locations. Got your two cabinets back here, transformer, meter, all in one, one area. Your Delta power cabinets, one per dispenser. So, all kinds of technical gubbins behind the scenes. There we go, 55 kilowatt hours more or less. Quick, but pricey. Ouch. No squeegees behind us. Bins are across in the main forecourt. You're not actually on a main road here though. There's obviously some traffic, but uh, most of the drive-through is going through there. I think it may come out here, but nothing terrible. So that's all right. So, good start. I mean, obviously, it's some little site deficiencies at this place with uh, the having to back across the drive through line, not ideal on a busy peak travel weekend. You could see that being a little awkward if you need to back in, but these stalls are pretty big and the cables have enough retraction on them that you probably could just pull in nose first and then just deal with the uh, backing out once you're done with your session. So what do you think? Is it worth the amount of money that's gone into a site like this for all the amenities you get? You still do just have that basic four stalls, but you do have the convenience. You do have the 24 7 facilities and the uh, proximity to travel routes uh, or should we be getting more bang for our buck is there more that you'd expect from half a million plus on these nevi sites which a lot of them will be would you be expecting six eight ten stalls and uh, maybe a little bit more ambitious than uh, just the bare minimum from these providers let us know what you think down in the comments or whether you see any Nevi sites popping up near you anytime soon or have you visited one of these pilot flying J sites that are springing up pretty quickly here. Uh, let us know down in the comments how your experience was, what you're thinking in terms of pricing, amenities and uh, what you get for the experience.
Thanks for watching this episode of Quick Charge, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.